Hey guys, my name is Micah and this is going to be the 17th video in this 2D iPhone game programming series. In this video we're going to make our scene look pretty. So we're going to change the background color to more of a sky color. We're going to um, change the ground so it's that kind of colorful uh, diagonal lines ground you saw in the first tutorial video. And um, also we might add in a couple clouds just for kicks. So to get started, we're going to change our background color. So go into our My Scene implementation file, go to where we set our background color in the Create Content method. And um, I have a preset value right here for the RGB that I'm just going to put in here. It's uh, 0 0.54 for the red, 0 0.7853 for the green, and 0 0.1 for the blue. Now where I'm getting these colors is I actually use a tool um, on rgbtool.com. It's essentially some, the same thing you get in Photoshop except online. Um, it gives you that color palette you can drag around and just select your color and, and it will give you these RGB values. So I will link to RGB, rgbtool.com if you want to check that out and kind of mess with some of the background colors here. But you'll see when we run this that this is just going to not change that to... That is a disgusting color. Okay. Where I messed up here is this blue here. It should not be 0.1. It should be 1.0. Okay, so we don't want this weird slime green. Yeah, we want the, <laughs> the sky blue color here. So the background color is now set up. Now we want to change the ground here. And so what the ground is, um, like you saw in the first tutorial, all it is is an image that can be horizontally tiled seamlessly. Um, that's basically the same size as the iPhone screen right here. So it's um, the image I have is 100 by 568. I will link to the image so you can download it in the description below if you want to get that. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this image into our project. So after you download it, you can drag this in. Uh, make sure that checkbox that you just saw was checked uh, just so it adds it to the project. And then we're going to go into our ML World Generator implementation file right where we created our ground. And we're going to take out all this junk. We're going to do sprite node with image named instead of sprite node with color. And we're going to put in that ground name. So now if we run this, you should see that the image is loaded in place of the ground instead of that green box. So yeah, so you can see that um, now as we, as we move along the uh, image tiles next to each other and because, um, because it's a seamless tile it kind of looks like a continuous ground as you move along. So now we're going to create a couple clouds up here just for kicks. Um, it's going to demonstrate a new type of node called the SK shape node. So we're going to go into the Mycene implementation file. Uh, just to make it more organized, we're going to make a new method called the load clouds method. And it's going, each of these clouds is going to be a node called the SK shape node. So this is going to be um, cloud one here. Let me just click over to... Um, I actually don't use SK shape nodes that often, so sometimes I have to look back at um, look back at the API to see exactly what I'm doing. So it's going to be SK shape node node here. We're going to then set the path of our shape node. That's exactly how um, that's how our shape node will get its shape. It doesn't actually you don't create the shape when you initialize it like you do with the SK sprite node. Um, you just need to set this path property. And this looks kind of weird. It's called UI Bezier path. Um, this will create our shape node. This UI Bezier path class has a lot of different methods you can use to draw different shapes. The one we want is the Bezier path with oval and rect um, method. And it wants, a, it wants a CG rect as an argument. So you do CG rect make um, the first two properties are going to be its position, so we're going to do 0, 65 for its position. And for the width, we're going to do 100, <coughs> sorry, 140. I sound like I'm in middle school again right there. So now we have our UI Bezier path. But because the path is a CG path, that's what it wants for this property. You do dot CG path, and then you're good to go. 
So then you can set the fill color and stroke color of your cloud. So cloud one dot fill color is going to be white. The fill color is just the, um, it's kind of like the paint bucket tool when you um, are in, in just MS paint or something. It's just what fills in that whole circle there. So you are color, white color. The stroke color is essentially the border. Stroke color equals UI color, black color. Then we are going to add this to our scene. To our, actually no, we're gonna add this to our world. Um, remember, if we want the clouds to kind of leave us as the hero moves forward, we need to add it to the world. If we add it to the scene, it's gonna, um, it's just gonna stay in its position as the world goes by. So, world add child cloud one. So when we run this, you will see this cloud that is not wanting to show up here. Um, oval and rect, CG path make. Oh, well, duh. Okay, so we actually haven't called this load clouds method within our create content class. So this method isn't even getting called yet. So we actually just need to call this method and then we should be good to go. So there you go, now you see your cloud. When you tap to begin, um, the cloud moves by and it just kind of disappears there. So I'm just gonna copy this down here. I'm gonna make one more cloud because I want two clouds instead of one. <laughs> We're gonna do the position of this cloud. It's gonna be minus 250, 45, same size there. Um, make sure you change these. So the cloud twos and then at this. So now when you run it, you are going to see these two clouds right here. So um, now our scene looks a little bit prettier. One more thing we're gonna do actually before, um, before I end this tutorial, because I have a little bit more time, is as of now, we can't really jump over this first block. I mean, I haven't been able to yet, so we need to speed up the hero and uh, kind of shorten this um, shorten these obstacles so it's actually possible. So we're going to go into our ML Hero class. I'm going to change this to 0 .004 so he moves a little bit faster. Um, and we're going to change the obstacle height in our ML World generator implementation file to, let's say, 50. So now when you run this, we move a little bit faster. We can actually clear these obstacles. So um, it's a little bit more game-like. So thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys in the next tutorial.